Hello YouTube, um, the moon is the only natural satellite of the earth and the fifth largest moon in the solar system. It is the largest satellite of a planet in our solar system relative to the size of its primary planet. And the question remains, is it natural? Moon, the celestial body has long been surrounded by a kind of mystical halo that has held us captive since time immemorial. A mysterious glowing sphere hanging in the sky for thousands of years has given rise to many legends and various cultures. Throughout the history of mankind, strange fairy tales have been written about the moon and amazing stories have been told. But there is memory that mankind has of the time when the moon just was not there. Let's start with the Pelasgians, people who lived on Earth before the moon. Many ancient historians whose works have survived to our time mention the people of the Pelasgians, who inhabited different areas of ancient Greece before the appearance of the Greeks themselves. The name Pelasgians was used by classic Greek writers to refer either to the predecessors of the Greeks or to all the inhabitants of Greece before the emergence of the Greeks. In general, Pelasgian, or Pelasgian has come to mean more broadly all the indigenous inhabitants of the Aegean Sea region and their cultures, a hold old term for any ancient primitive and presumably indigenous people in the Greek world. The stories about them are very diverse and numerous among Greek writers and historians. And what these stories have in common is that the Pelasgians were people of the old world and came before the Greeks themselves. It's very interesting. The most interesting thing, actually, is that, that at that time when the Pelasgians existed, the moon did not exist. Democritus and Anaxagoras mentioned that there was a time when the moon was not visible in the night sky. Describing the history of the Greek region of Arcadia, Aristotle, by the way, writes that the Pelasgians have lived in the area since very ancient times and a time when the moon did not exist. The period when the earth was moonless is probably the oldest memory of mankind. Apollonius of Rhodes mentions something similar, speaking of a time when not all celestial objects occupied their places in the sky before the era of the generation of Deucalion and Pyria, when there was no moon and there were only Pelasgians who lived in the mountains of Arcadia. These inhabitants of Arcadia were also known as the settlers, which in Greek means those who were before the moon. Anaxagoras, who lived in the 5th century BC, was one of the first philosophers in the history of mankind who recognized that the moon was a rocky celestial body and not a deity. And in Plutarch's work Moralia, we find the following statement. There were followers of the Arcadians of Evander, the so-called pre-lunar people. In the same way, Avidius wrote, they say that the Arcadians owned their land before the birth of Zeus, and people are older than the moon. And Stephen of Byzantium echoes him. The Arcadians and their women existed before the moon. Hippolytus refers to a legend that says, Arcadia gave birth to Pelasgus older than the moon. Lucian of Samosata, in his work on astrology, also mentions that the Arcadians in their madness claim that they're older than the moon. But then we have to travel on to South America. Strange evidence of the absence of the moon in the heavens has also been found in other parts of the world, for example, oral traditions of indigenous Colombians of the highlands of Bogota in the eastern mountain ranges of Colombia, belong to the period before the moon. In the most distant times when the moon was not yet in heaven, the legends of the Chipcha tribe say. Further to the south of the, on the American continent, the 
Tiahuanaco, the symbols on the gate of the sun, Puerta del Sol, and the walls of Calasasai indicate that the moon appeared in orbit around the earth at a certain point in time about 12,000 years ago. Well, this is very significant if you look at my other videos and the period like the Shigir Island or the strange <clears throat> ancient city sound found in Turkey. You'll see it's about the same period, 12,000 years ago. This conclusion was reached in 1956 by researcher and writer Hans Schindler Bellamy, who studied the moment, the monument. He wrote about this in his book, The Tiwanako Calendar. Bellamy interpreted ancient astronomical symbols as a story telling about the moon. He explains the symbols on the stone carry mathematical and astronomical information. They not only indicate when the moon appeared, but also claim that before it entered orbit, the Earth rotated slower and the year lasted only 290 days. It is believed that because of this time difference, the planet rotated around its axis at a slower speed than today, and therefore the days were longer. According to the aforementioned author, the symbols on the gates of the sun indicate that these characteristics of the Earth changed with the appearance of the moon, which caused great upheaval due to the changed gravity. The number of storms, earthquakes, floods, and other disasters has increased. It is believed that this event may have been the source from which the story of the flood and Noah's Ark appeared, as well as other legends present in various cultures around the world. Modern scientists, by the way, do not deny that in the early era of the existence of mankind, the moon was absent in the sky. According to one account, the moon was originally one of the planets of the solar system, but due to a cosmic cataclysm, it left orbit and turned into an Earth satellite. Over time, a system of tides was established, and the cycles of our life activity began to depend on the moon. However, more interesting events occurred in the sky of our planet millennia ago. Look, to me, very interesting are legends of the Russian indigenous people about the celestial objects. With greatest respect to the Russian scientist, Yelena Viktorovna Shanshina and her work, Legends on the Multiplicity of Stars Among the Tongasic speaking peoples of the Southern far east of Russia, uh, to the problems of Genesis. Here's what she says. A common place and the beginning of the plot of many well-known accounts of legends about the plurality of stars is the story of a legendary epoch or era, chaos, placed in indefinite prescription when several suns shone in the sky at the same time, and sometimes several moons. At first, three suns were shining. Um, then our land was just beginning to cool down. This is how one of the Aroch myth begins. The earth was still quite liquid, like water. When three suns were shining, the water began to decrease, and the earth began to harden. It was unbearably hot on our land. The rocks were boiling. At that time, there were no people on earth, no tribes, no living beings. There was only one Hadau. As evidence of the actual existence in the distant past of the era of the plurality of sons or luminaries, modern Tungasic speaking peoples of the region give generally quite similar arguments. The Nanaese residents of the village uh, for example, tell the following. The evidence is, for example, when bringing guests to the steep bank of the Kur River and pointing to the black layer of the earth, squeezed from above and below by lighter ones, they say, this is the earth that burned when there were three suns. It is healing. If a dog or a pig gets sick, we take a little bit from here and add it to their food, and they recover. Okay, you, you heard it. 
The, navig the Negidals, pointing to the black hole, asked, what if the earth had not burned because of the heat of the three suns in the past? Then where could this coal come from in the mountains? Another proof of the same kind was the presence of volcanic slag on the banks of the Amur River. The Aroch believed that the nostrils, or as they say, as they put it, leaky stones in the taiga, became so because at the time of the three suns they boiled and melted. Against the background of the plot about the fate of extra suns, uh, that is a common to all people who are studied in, in this process. One curious detail stands out, which is present only in the Udegea versions or accounts of the legends about the plurality of stars. In the myths of these people, the moon appears in place of the slain sun. In one of this type of legends recorded in the 1920s by Soviet researcher Krainovich, it is reported that one sun was shot with an arrow by a man. Then, a, then a, the moon appeared, the sky rose up, one sun has become. At the same time, other peoples of the earth, region have ideas about the origin of the moon as a rule, independent and independent of the legends about the plurality of stars plot. So it appeared, but differently from other legends, just to be sure. But it appeared. It was not there before. I will come back one day to the work of the Russian scientists. She published it, I believe, back in 1998. Uh, she's a teacher today, but I bow down to her work. She did really interesting research. And definitely I will speak more about the strange legends of the three sons and the basically warfare in ancient times, slinging missiles or arrows at luminaries. Very interesting. And I'll tell you more about the legends of the indigenous people that remind us so much of celestial battles in antiquity. And maybe what we refer to today as Star Wars. Just understand, there is so much to learn from the folklore of the indigenous people and tribes of Eurasia too, but not only that, of course. But let's look, for example, to the South East Asia. Um, and again, this is from uh, the Russian scientist work. Um, she can say that we can, she said that we can speak with confidence about only one common theme, the theme of the um, ruin of the ruinousness, meaning the damage done, of the excessive heat of one, two hot or several suns that were shining at the same time of the first creation. In the, le in the legends of the people, Inhabiting Taiwan, for example, there is a story about how two brothers go to kill one sun that was too hot. They shoot at it and split it into two parts, the sun and the moon. Well, also moon, some people believe today, is a spaceship, like a space's Noah's Ark, celestial Noah's Ark. And... Um, some consider it to be something similar to the Death Star. And they say because in the Indian epochs, you can find information indicating the existence of such objects at the time when there was the battle of the gods. But we already covered Indian legends, and you can find them uh, in uh, videos in my channel. And of course, not only legends, but the writings of Mahabharata and other very, very interesting works of mankind. So I'll tell you more stories like this in the future. We'll continue to explore the moon. I have quite a few videos about it. And I know the moon is of great interest to the superpowers today. And if you can support my research, please do so. You'll find the links in description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel and tell others. Thank you.